So most people probably already realize that their iPhone or advanced Android comes with a very sophisticated camera. But did you know that they can also be used as a webcam in Ob Studio? This means that content creators don't always need to break the bank right away because they might actually have a completely usable camera right in their pocket already. So in this video, I'll go over a few different options you can use to use your phone as a camera in Ob Studio. Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is John and this is Phaser Tech. So maybe you might have noticed, this channel is still pretty new, and one dilemma I face that many content creators might face when they're starting out is, which camera should I use? Should I invest in a new one? Should I settle for a crappy webcam until I can afford a good one? Then I realized my phone had a pretty decent camera in it, so I decided to do a little research to see what apps were available to use it as a webcam. And that's when I came across these two apps that I'm going to share with you today. Now the two apps I'm looking at today are made by the same company, Dev47 Apps. They're available on both Google Play and the Apple App Store, but in this video I'll be only going over the Android versions of Droid Cam X and Droid Cam Ob. Also, I'll leave links in the description for this page and other pages I show in the video. So let's start with Droid Cam X, which is older and less advanced, but its free version supports HD resolutions unlike the free version of Droid Cam Ob. I was able to get the free version of Droid Cam X on Aptoid, which is similar to Google Play. Vanilla Droid Cam and Droid Cam X are very similar, so if you don't use Aptoid and want to use the Google Play Store, then you can use the vanilla Droid Cam, which is basically the same thing. After you install the app, you'll be presented with this screen. Tap the upper right corner to change the settings. Looking at the camera and microphone settings, you can see this app is somewhat lacking in features. Now let's install the program on the PC side to get things running. I'll be doing this on a Windows 10 machine for this video, but it's also available for Linux as well. After it's installed, run it and you'll be greeted with this screen. If you're using Wi-Fi, then you'll simply enter your phone's IP address here and start. But personally, I'm using USB because it also provides power to the phone. If you're using USB, you'll need to enable developer mode on the phone and install the proper drivers on your PC, which can vary between models. Once you're connected, simply click the refresh button and wait till you see your device, then hit start. You should now see the video stream on your PC. However, it might not be an HD resolution. So let's click Droid Cam on the top left and then go into HD mode to ensure you're in the correct resolution. Your computer will need to restart if you change this. Once you're back, take note of whether the controls work on the PC side or the phone side. I noticed the controls were grayed out for me on the PC, but I was able to adjust things such as zoom and white balance and other settings on the phone itself while it was running. Now it's time to get it configured in Ob Studio. Simply add a capture device like you would any other webcam, and then select Droid Cam Source from the list. You might see multiple entries to use, so pick whichever one works. This solution was pretty straightforward and it worked fine, but I noticed quality wasn't quite up to par with what I was expecting. The video looked pixelated despite running it in 1080p mode, and the colors look slightly off. Also enabling the with stat setting showed the FPS wasn't a constant 30, and was actually a variable rate going down to 20 FPS quite frequently. I decided to investigate further and found this thread on the obsproject.com forums where an employee of Dev47 Apps said their newer app, Droid Cam Obs, was far more advanced and built from the ground up to be more professional, so I decided to give it a try and see for myself. 
Installation and setup was similar on the phone, and the settings menu proved to be more advanced, offering better features. Hardware acceleration is supported, and the Camera 2 API allows for extra controls and 60 FPS if your phone supports it. Looking good so far. Now, installing it on the PC is even more straightforward than before. Simply install the OBS plugin and you're ready to go without any external program. Also, notice this version is available for Mac also. Now, when you add it as a source, you'll select DroidCam OBS instead of video capture device like last time. Again, if you're using Wi-Fi, enter the phone's IP address here, or if you're using USB, just push refresh and wait for it to pop up. And now connect. Right away, I noticed the colors looked much more accurate using this version, and the resolution was smoother as well. However, the free version limits you to only standard definition. If you want HD, then you gotta pay up. $10 is a little pricey in my opinion, but I think 5 or 6 bucks would have been more reasonable for simply enabling HD resolution. It's not too bad though if you plan to use it a lot, so I bought it. Results were much better and I'm happy with the purchase. My phone doesn't have the best camera, so some of you out there with newer phones will probably get better results. But I think I get pretty acceptable shots with my Moto G7 Plus. Overall, most people will probably want to upgrade for the improvement in quality. But some more casual users might find the free version acceptable also. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe to help the channel grow. In the upcoming weeks, I'm planning to change things up a bit and do some other tech-related things, such as guitar gear and amplifiers, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So please stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.